Hi everyone, today we are continuing our discussion of chapter 19. The two things I plan to cover today include Michaelis Menten kinetics, which you've no doubt heard of in your biology classes and in your biochemistry classes. And then once we get past that, we'll uh, talk about how kinetics relate to drug binding. And uh, I don't think we'll actually get to membrane permeability today, but we'll definitely talk about drug binding. So first we're gonna talk about Michaelis Menten kinetics which are very, very commonly used to describe enzymes, especially in biochemistry and cell biology. And michaelis menten kinetics uses the language of catalysts that we covered last time. And a couple of the assumptions that we made near the end of yesterday's lecture was that the concentration of the catalyst, or in this case, an enzyme, is gonna be much smaller than the starting concentration of the substrate that the enzyme is binding to. Then we also make another assumption. So this is assumption number one. The second assumption we're making as is that um, we are near the beginning of the reaction when the rate is the fastest. Now, michaelis menten kinetics are not always valid. They def it definitely suffers from certain shortcomings, but it is just so commonly used and it is uh, definitely good for you to know about it. So, so what I told you last time was that we are considering a reaction of the sort, though I'm going to replace catalyst with enzyme. So E stands for enzyme, S still stands for substrate. And those two can combine with a certain forward rate constant K1 and form a complex. But then that also exists in a dynamic equilibrium with uh, that complex unforming. However, there is another rate constant, K2, that describes the formation of products. And we found in the catalyst portion of this chapter that the rate of this reaction, given at least those two assumptions that I have listed up there, it equals that second rate constant times the starting concentration of the substrate, starting concentration of the enzyme, all over starting concentration of the substrate plus Km, which last time I told you was called the composite constant but for this slide, we are going to call this the Michaelis constant. So the composite constant and the Michaelis constant are the same thing for michaelis menten kinetics. So I also pointed out that the maximum rate is right there at the beginning of the reaction. It's also often called VM in some textbooks, and it happens to equal that second rate constant times the starting concentration of the enzyme. And this rate constant K2 is often called the turnover number. Frequently in publications, you'll be given the Michaelis constant for a reaction, and you're probably also gonna be given R max, though you might also be given this turnover number when the uh, biochemical kinetics properties of enzymes are presented in literature. Next, I'd like to talk about what michaelis menten kinetics can tell us about non-covalent inhibitors. So the reactions that we're going to be considering on this slide uh, include the original reaction that we had on the last slide, though I'm going to break it up into two different steps. I didn't uh, put it this way exactly like this on the last slide, though. But then there's also a side reaction that can occur where the enzyme combines with the inhibitor and then it moves forward to an enzyme inhibitor complex and it exists in a dynamic equilibrium. So that inhibitor will bind at a certain rate and then also unbind at a certain rate. So this is sort of like two parallel reactions. And as you can imagine, some proportion of that enzyme is going to be occupied by the inhibitor 
and it's going to depend on the kinetics and also the thermodynamics of that binding. So at this point, there's a fairly complicated process where we must assume that whatever the starting concentration of the enzyme is, it will eventually end up as, at a later time, the concentration of the unbound enzyme, plus the concentration of the enzyme bound to the inhibitor, plus the concentration of the enzyme bound to the substrate. And if you go back to what we talked about yesterday, or uh, on the first lecture of this chapter, then you can resolve the catalyst rate equation, and you'll get a new expression that we can use for michaelis menten kinetics. Though I'm just going to give you the final result right now without walking through all the difficult derivation, just so that you can see what that inhibitor does to the michaelis menten equation. So our rate is now going to look like this. And by the way, this is approximately equal. K2, starting concentration of substrate, starting concentration of enzyme. So far, it looks very similar, although now we're going to not just have that Michaelis constant by itself, but we're going to have to add this extra term related to the concentration of the inhibitor and the equilibrium constant of the inhibitor. So this Ki, by the way, is going to equal concentration of the enzyme, concentration of the inhibitor, divided by concentration of the enzyme inhibitor complex there. And that's also going to obey the detailed balance of the K3 and the K negative 3 rate constants. And so now, if you take a look at this term, if we just call that Km star, that is actually a new Michaelis constant. And we can plug it right into the original michaelis menten equation. So that's the effect that an inhibitor has. It changes that Michaelis constant, and it's going to result in a slower rate overall.